Hi, everybody. Welcome to Factorial Analysis of Variance. So in this chapter, we're going to talk about a factorial ANOVA. Last chapter was one-way ANOVA. Now we're going to talk about a factorial ANOVA. The difference between factorial ANOVA and one-way ANOVA is that a factorial ANOVA takes care of more than one independent variable. We call those factors. A one-way ANOVA has one factor. A factorial ANOVA has more than one factor, at least two. When we're looking at this, so for example, let's take a look at this these data that I have in front of us. So let's say that I thought that uh, the major, your major affects your GPA, but I also think that that kind of depends on what school you go to. So I think both major and school interact to affect GPA. So that means that major is an independent variable, school is an independent variable, and GPA is the dependent variable. A factor is an independent variable. So for example, major would be one of the factors. School would be a separate factor. Now, when you look at this, you need to make sure you understand how many factors you have and how many levels are in the factors. Because the way we're doing, one, the way we're doing analysis of variance, we're only using categorical factors and a continuous dependent variable. So that means that when you're looking at your factors, your independent variables, right? You need to know how many levels we're talking about. So major is one variable and it has different levels. For example, psychology is, is a level, business is a level, drama is a level, and then psychology, business, drama, right? So these are three levels, psychology, business, and drama are levels of the variable major. In this case, that variable is called a factor because it's going to help predict GPA. All right. So major is a factor and it has one, two, three levels. School is a separate factor, a separate variable, and it has one, two levels. CU Boulder is one level, CSU is another level. We would call this a three by two analysis of variance. Three, because the first factor has three levels. By two, because the second factor has two levels. The first factor is major, and it has psychology, business, and drama. That's three levels. The second factor is school, and it has two levels, CU, Boulder, and CSU. That means it's a three by two. But what about GPA? GPA is the dependent variable, not a factor, so it doesn't get one of these numbers. This is a three by two design. Compare that to this one. This is a two by two. We still have major in school, but now when you look at major, whoops, go back. When you look at major, how many levels do we have? One, two levels, and one, two levels. Two levels of major, two levels of school, two by two. The dependent variable is GPA. The reason why you do a factorial analysis of variance is because you don't want to just do two separate t-tests. You want to see how these mix together. Let's say that I think that being a psychology major means that you're going to have a better GPA. But I only think that's the case if you're at CU Boulder. I think if CSU, it doesn't matter if you're a psychology major or a business major. I think it only happens when you're at the school. The reason when you're at CU Boulder is your school. So the reason why this is important is because we can say, you know what? I think that the psychology, the major you have affects your GPA, but I think it depends on this other factor. In this case, that would be the school. If we want to look at the mix of that, then we're not just looking at, you know, the mean of all psychology majors compared to the mean of the business majors or the mean of all CU Boulder students compared to the mean of all CSU students. We want to mix them up. We want them to interact. And that's why we need to do what's called a factorial analysis of variance. And to get a little bit more into this, Let's talk about the difference between what's called a main effect and an interaction. So to do this, let's look at some new data. I want you to look at these data right here and tell me what kind of design this is. Okay, so let's look at this. Let's say that I have a hypothesis that you will eat more bowls of cereal if you live off campus than on campus. 
but I think it depends on whether or not you have a car. So here's my theory. I think that I think that uh, people who uh, have a car um, and and live off campus, you know, they can take, you know, they can eat more complicated foods or maybe even go out for breakfast or something like that. Whereas people who do not have a car and live off campus, it takes a long time for them to walk. And so they've got to, uh, they, they've got to eat cereal, they've got to eat something fast and go. I think people who live on campus, whether you have a car or not, doesn't matter because you can take your time and eat and then just kind of walk over to your class and it's not a big deal, right? So I think that living on or off campus affects how many bowls of cereal you have, but I think it depends on whether or not you own a car. In this case, I think that residents and car affect bowls of cereal. The dependent variable is bowls of cereal. Residents and car are factors. There are two levels of residents on campus and off campus. There are two levels of car, yes and no, meaning yes, I own a car, no, I don't own a car. This is a two by two design. Two levels of residents, two levels of car. They're both factors that affect serial, which is the dependent variable. It doesn't get a number. All right. We need to talk about something called main effects first, because when I put this into an analysis of variance, I'm going to get several different things. And the first thing I'm going to do is it's going to say, all right, well, let's let's assume that you wanted to know as if it was a t-test, the difference between on campus and off campus. Right. Or let's assume like an independent samples t-test, you want to know yes, car or no car, which one you would do. Right. That would be the main effect. The main effect looks at one of the factors on the dependent variable alone without the influence of the other factors. So, for example, when you look at this, the main effect is going to be the effect of each factor by itself. The interaction is going to be the combination, the mixture of them. So let's look at the, the data that we were just looking at in terms of a main effect. The main effect that we would be looking at would be comparing these orange scores to the blue scores, right? Everybody who lives on campus compared to everybody who lives off campus. So these bowls of cereal compared to these bowls of cereal. And if you look here on the right, I have the average. So two plus three plus three plus two divided by four, that's 2.5. 2 plus 4 plus 3 plus 6 divided by 4 is 3.75, all right? So what we're really doing is comparing this group of scores and their mean, 2.5, com compared to this group of scores and their mean, 3.75. The main effect looks at on-campus compared to off-campus as if car just didn't even exist. That's why it's kind of grayed out. It doesn't matter. A main effect just looks at one of the factors by itself right? It's comparing on campus to off campus, one of the factors by itself. That means that we're going to have a separate main effect for car, right? The main effect for residents is comparing on campus to off campus, 2.5 to 375 over here, but we'll have a separate main effect for car. It's comparing all these oranges. These are the yes car, yes car, yes car, yes car. Those are the oranges. Yep. Yes cars compared to the no cars. All right. When we do that, we have the separate main effect for whether or not you own a car. That is 2.5 and 3.75 right there. Does that make sense? Okay, so whenever you're doing this, you will have as many main effects as you have factors. You have the same number of main effects as you have factors. And an analysis of variance is going to give you a statistic for each of those main effects. It is going to look at on campus compared to off campus, that's one main effect. And then it's separately going to look at yes car compared to no car, that's a separate main effect. All right. Main effects are the each factor on the dependent variable by themselves. By themselves. Looking at the levels of each factor on the dependent variable without the influence of the other factor. Okay. An interaction is the combination. So you see these different colors? So this reddish color is on campus with a car. The yellow is on campus, no car. The purple is off campus, yes car. And the dark blue is off campus, no car. The interaction is how each, how these factors interact with each other, how residents interacts with car on how many bowls of cereal you eat, right? It's saying, all right, I wanna look at the combination 
of living on campus with owning a car compared to the combination of living on campus with no car compared to the combination of off campus, yes car, off campus, no car. That means we're gonna have four different groups involved in that interaction. Here's one way you know how many groups you should be looking at. Remember this is a two by two, right? Two levels of residence, two levels of car, two times two is four. That's how many groups you're gonna have in the interaction. So if you notice down here, each of these different groups has their own mean. So people who live on campus and own a car, yes, own a car, they have uh, bowls of cereal 2.5. The on-campus no car also averages 2.5. The off-campus with a car averages 2.5, and off-campus with no car averages a 5. This is the interaction that we will be looking for in the analysis of variance. So another way to look at these same data is by looking at it like this. Okay, so you see here, we have the rows, those represent your residents. The rows represent residents. So this is all the people who live on campus, all right? And then the columns represent whether or not you own a car, yes or no. And here's the, here, these are the combinations. So people who live on campus and yes own a car, they average 2.5. Off campus and yes own a car, they average 2.5. Off campus, no car, they average five. On campus with no car averages 2.5. These means that you see on the edge, those are what we call the marginal means. They are the comparison for the main effect. Remember, the main effect is looking just at on campus compared to off campus, okay? As if car didn't even exist. That's why we have these over here on the side, because there's no combination with whether or not you own a car. It's just on campus compared to off campus. And the same thing over here. Here's the other marginal means. The other marginal means are whether you own a car, yes, or own a car, no, right? We don't care about whether you're on or off campus right there. The main effects are just the factors by themselves. We put these means in the margins. That's why we call them marginal means. However, in here, these that are in the table, these are the interaction terms. And the difference between them is what we call a simple effect. So for example, this off campus with no car, the average is five. On campus with no car is 2.5, comparing the combination of those two, comparing five to 2.5 right there, that would be a simple effect. A factorial analysis of variance will give us each of the main effects and the interaction. And what we normally care about is the interaction. The interaction kind of trumps the main effects. It gives us more information, right? By the way, you can see right here, the average of 2.5 plus 2.5 is 2.5, the marginal mean. 5, .5, uh, 5 plus 2.5 divided by 2 is 3.75. That's why the marginal means are there, right? You'll see where those are. You can tell what the marginal means are just by these simple effect, uh, each individual group mean right here. Okay, so to do this, let's go ahead and show you how to do this uh, using our studio, how, how to calculate it. From here on out, we're not even going to mess with Excel on this. We're going to only do this on our studio to show you what it looks like. So let's go ahead and go. To our studio then 